police powers, we must make it clear that we will never sacrifice our nation without a fight to the bitter end. There can be no doubt that we're in the middle of an extraordinary time of change. Those who believed 18 months ago that the draconian legislation then contemplated was a brief and passing phase are now coming to the realization that coercive police powers, attacks on private property, attacks against personal liberty, and above all, attacks against freedom of speech and freedom of worship are now becoming a permanent part of the administration of the modern Republic of Ireland. We are now facing into what may become a two-tier republic with people being forced to participate in a, um, an experimental process of vaccination which has been unproven and on which we are hearing widespread reports of significant adverse effects. Those who have abrogated our rights will not quickly sacrifice the power they have taken over us. While we still have a chance, we must make it clear that this is a situation we will never tolerate. Do you really think that people like Eamon Ryan, when they have an opportunity already on the statute books to institute permanent lockdowns to promote their deranged ideas in respect of global warming, when the mad panoply of Marxists who govern so many of our political parties have an opportunity to prescribe freedom of speech and to promote the race hatred against Irish people that they so fondly espouse, do you really think they will give up those powers? Not without a fight. Well, if they want a fight, they can have it. What we have seen over recent months is, I'm afraid, the beginning of a very dark period in Ireland's history. And we must be fully up for whatever fight is coming. Why is it that Ireland is suffering from the longest and most destructive lockdown, lockdown of any of the European countries? Why is it that over the past 20 to 30 years, Ireland is always the most extreme country in its social legislation, in its attacks against property and free speech, in the promotion of a monochrome, politically correct media, and in its attacks against the family and against Christian religious belief. Is it because Ireland has always been seen as a useful ground for experimentation? That if the globalist puppet masters who control our government and our state can introduce destructive, repressive legislation here, then this can act as a model in other countries? We must say to government that we will no longer be part of their petri dish or their experiment. We are a free people and we intend to remain so. <laughs> there are questions we must ask, not just of government, but of all of our social institutions. Where have our media been? Why are they not examining the many cases that we're hearing in regard to adverse effects of vaccines? Why have the various highly regarded scientific and medical personnel, both at home and internationally, who pointed out the dangers of the lockdown process? Why has they not been interviewed and given a platform to speak? In my position as chairman of this party, I have received a number of communications in regard to negative impacts, not just of the lockdown on mental and social health, but also in respect of the vaccine process. These are, of course, anecdotal, but they represent a level of concern that does require investigation. No democracy can properly function without a media which is prepared to do its job. And we need to hold our newspapers and television stations to account for their failure to properly report what is happening in our country. Why have the courts sat in their hands over the last year and a half and refuse to deal with the most urgent matter that has ever come before them. If they really believe that the constitution of this country allows the government to drive a coach and four through our rights and liberties on the flimsiest possible pretext, then they are saying that our courts are effectively saying that we no longer have a constitution, that we are no longer a free people, and that we must return to the status of serfs as we were before independence. We will not take the road to serfdom as the World Economic Forum would wish us to do. We will never let that happen. <laughs> Why is it that of all the 166 people elected to the Doyle, there is only a handful of independents who are prepared to act as an opposition? The main opposition party, Sinn Féin, are even more determined than the government in their desire to destroy the Irish nation, to undermine our culture and our history, and to bring an end to the great crusade of Irish liberty. <laughs> I 
I must ask at this stage how we have arrived at a process whereby every one of our civic and cultural institutions seem united in an effort to destroy this nation and to destroy its ancient liberties which we hold to be sacred. I believe this has come about as a direct consequence of our membership of the European Union. I believe that one of the most critical moments in this country's history was the decision to rerun the Lisbon Treaty when a climate of mass intimidation against the people by the government and by the institutions of Europe was held. On that occasion, the Irish people were required to vote for something which they knew to be against their interests and which they knew to be against the interest of the Irish people and the Irish nation. From then on, we were seen as fair game for those who are the enemies of this country. I have come to the conclusion that in the long term, the Irish nation has no future if it chooses to remain within the European Union. There is no point any longer in putting a fine tooth on this. We either leave or we will perish as a people and as a great historic nation. And we do not intend to let that happen. Can anyone doubt that the European Union with its fake paper currency is heading for a major crash? Any union which can make no provision for the separate values of independent nations is not a free union but a tyranny. When we see Mark Rutte, the Dutch Prime Minister, demanding the expulsion of Hungary because it dares to try to protect itself from the promotion of homosexuality to children, and when Mr. Rutte says that this is an indication that Hungary does not subscribe to European values, I can only say that if European values are directed to the premature sexualization of children, then it's time that those European values are swept back into the gutter where they belong. When we see the ongoing theft of Ireland's fisheries, when we see the integrity of the all-Ireland economy being used as a football by socialist European bureaucrats in their economic war, against an independent democratic Britain, and when we see Irish taxpayers being put on the hook to pay for the sharp practices of the Franco-German banks, I think it is time that the Irish people woke up and realized that this union, instead of being our salvation, is a menace to our future. When we see the effects of the reckless immigration policies pursued by childless European leaders, I think we must come to realize that in the words of our great national poet, W.B. Yeats, we have become fastened to a sick and dying animal which knows not what it is. Unless Europe radically changes its administration, its laws and its culture, it has no future. And if Ireland is to have a future, we must extricate ourselves from it. And as far as I'm concerned, the sooner the better. <clears throat> Sadly, I believe that the real impact of the present lockdown is yet to be seen. No government can believe that it can destroy small businesses for a year and a half, that it can disrupt education and health care, that it can borrow phenomenal amounts of money based on a debased currency, and that it can allow the European Union to continue to rob this country blind without causing a significant economic downturn. The present government are walking into the traps laid for them by Sinn Féin, who see themselves as the government in waiting. In the unhappy day that that party ever achieves power, we can only wait for a massive increase in taxation for a determined attacks against the rights of property to pay for the profligacy of what has gone on, for a permanent state of social, political and economic chaos and for the final destruction of Ireland as an independent state. I said I wouldn't be downbeat so I will try to end on a positive and it is this. People are waking up. Not everybody, but enough people are waking up. People are beginning to see there is something wrong. They're beginning to look around them when they see these vaccine passports and say, what the hell is going on here? Nobody would have believed this a year and a half ago. We predicted it, and it's exactly what is happening. The collapse of support that we saw yesterday for what had been the centrist parties, but are now parties of the left, is a good sign that there's an opportunity for a patriotic consensus to emerge, which will protect our nation, our children, and our economy. <clears throat> this is not a time for civil